Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to a deeper dive into the health of your gut and the role it can play in mental well being, the role it can play in insulin sensitivity, and ultimately, some of your biggest longevity targets. My name is Dr. D, and it is my honor to be a part of your help. I love to talk to people about what they can do, action steps each and every day to support wellness within them. Because if you are able to create wellness within you, then you are going to start to create wellness around you. And a healthier community makes all of us better. That is the goal of Market America and why I am so happy that you decided to join us here on our Market America Facebook page. We're on a regular basis, you can find us here as someone to give you health information, uh, the truth when it comes down to the brass tacks of what are the action steps you can take each and every day. One of the benefits of this section here is that we're going to go beyond what you think when it comes to digestive health. Many people will figure that digestive health has to do with food in, food out, right? Calories in, calories out. What's the quality of those calories? Do I really need to worry about how I measure out my plate? And maybe as I age, I'm not digesting as well as I once did. And you've identified that maybe your energy feels a little bit sluggish. Maybe because you've paid close attention or you don't pay attention, <laughs> You've noticed that not only is your energy sluggish, but you feel like maybe you're not making the mental connections that you're used to, or maybe you're just blaming it on the aging process altogether. How many of you have felt that way where you get yourself back into the gym? Perhaps you're back out on your patio doing your exercises, and you feel like there maybe isn't as much gas in your tank. Does this feel like any of you? right, where you feel like you could use a little more energy. You'd like to be making better connections in the brain, like one, two, three, right? You don't want it to be sluggish, skipping a beat, any of that. How many of you feel like it's about endurance, not just for exercise, getting through the day? Well, then I have news for you. We want to pay attention to your gut because it all starts in the gut. Did you know, did you know? that the health of your gut can impact your brain and that what's going on here is also a signal of what's going on here. We're going to talk about that tonight. Not just get into some of the details, but what are you going to do after you leave tonight's talk? Right? Did you know that not only does the health of your gut affect your brain, it also affects the quality of your heart over time? How well does that massive muscle work for you? How efficiently does it work for you? Can it draw on energy for you? Did you know, did you know that your gut is in constant communication, not just with the brain, but actually with the liver. And what that means is it has a role, not just in liver health, but also in sexual health. Yeah, your liver is a major player, right? And, I, and I'm trying to make a joke there. Your liver is a major player. If you can't detox well, then you can't age well. And detoxification plays a very big role in sexual health or what we do with our sex hormones. But guess where your liver is getting its direction from? Yeah, the large gut. It's getting it from your intestines. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how you can, whether it's for healthy aging, whether it's for energy throughout the day, whether it's for more energy for your fitness routine, or you are simply looking for how am I going to age the very best today from a sexual hormone standpoint, from a blood sugar health standpoint, from a cardiovascular standpoint. The jury's not out anymore, right? The judge has ruled and your gut is exactly what it is ruled in favor of because your cognitive function, your heart function, your ultimate 
energy throughout the day and ability to manage many of those hormones comes down to the help of your gut. So who's with me? Who wants to go on this ride with me today? Because today we're going to explore what is ultimately a fascinating world of what is referred to as the gut brain axis. And we're going to talk about how that gut brain axis affects your overall health and well-being. It's important to note that while you, we are going to talk about the gut and the brain tonight, you should know that there's actually something in the body. I've coined the total body access. And what that means is it's not just about a connection that your gut has to the brain, but a connection that your gut has to the liver I talked about, or maybe how your gut connecting to your liver is also connecting to your thyroid and reproductive organs. It's important to note that you are a beautiful, exquisite web, and that web is communicating through your nervous system, and your nervous system is telling it what to communicate, how fast to signal, how slow to signal. And that's why we're going to get into this tonight. The road to health is paved with good intestines. Well, that gut brain axis is the major player of all of that cell to cell communication. This gut brain axis is nothing more than a two way street. Uh, this two way street, this super highway is also known as the vagus nerve. For you that are geeks out there and you want to look some things up, it's called the 10th cranial nerve or the vagus nerve. Is also fondly referred to as the wanderer because it wanders throughout the body. It's in fact not just connected from the brain to the gut, but actually has webbing that goes out in that exquisite, exquisite machine that you are influencing the health of the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, the liver, muscles, reproductive organs. That is the total body axis that is your body. This nerve, as I said, is a super highway of communication between the gut and the brain. So all of this is to say, all of this is to say how well your vagus nerve is functioning and thus how well your gut and your brain communicate or dialogue with each other, right? How clear is that signal? How frequent is that signal? How loud is that signal? That is what will influence everything about your healthy aging from mood to heart rate, to digestion, to your weight, everything beyond the gut. So I don't need to tell you, your brain's a pretty important part of you, right? I don't need to tell you that this supercomputer doesn't just give you the ability to do math, but also the ability to recall important facts, right? Short-term and long-term memories gives you access to a healthy mood, or sometimes depending, not such healthy mood, it's a major player in focus and excitement, right? Well, what if I told you that that supercomputer has a boss? That supercomputer is getting its messages from the gut. The gut tells it what to do. And that's why the target for healthy aging, longevity, fitness, hormone support, all comes down to the gut. And that's why I always like to say the road to health is paved with good intestines, right? In fact, there's no aspect of our bodies, of our metabolism, any function, endocrine or otherwise, that the microbiome or your gut bugs don't influence. You are, and I'm sad to tell you this, but kind of excited at the same time, you're just simply a big vessel for bacteria right? That's what's going on. They are ruling the roost. They have their own energy cycles. They have their own chemical signals. They are creating a soup, an ecosystem in the intestines that is ultimately dictating the health of your muscles. And if they're hormone sensitive, the health of your brain, and if it's growth sensitive, the health of your energy pathways. And if you're spending energy, or if you're saving energy. And we're gonna talk about all of the different ways that you can influence this tonight. It's not enough to know the facts, right? What we have to do is take action and do something with the information that we're learning. So let's start with stress is a many splendored thing, right? We all know what it feels like to be stressed. We all know what it feels like to be under pressure, right? We all know what it feels like 
to be losing our head a little bit and thinking, I got to get a grip. Well, that stress starts in the gut. You've had butterflies in the belly. That's what you're feeling. You're actually feeling the activity of a stress response and the vagus nerve communicating from the brain to the gut. What you see may create stress around you, right? It could be something urgent, like you're about to see an accident and you're going to feel that, right? Where do you feel it? You don't feel it here. You feel it here. You're going to feel that flutter of you're just about to meet someone or maybe it's your first kiss or you feel that flutter because you're going to see the love of your life again and you can't wait to do that, right? That's the vagus nerve actually communicating with you. And then when we think about just the day-to-day -day grind, how many of you have ever felt the day-to-day -day grind in the intestines or in the gut, right? How many of you put your hands on your gut to calm yourself down? How many of you put your hands on your belly to just take a beat? How many of you put your hands on your belly when you are feeling like you just need to what? Take control. And one of the reasons why is because the vagus nerve is communicating between the brain and the gut to give you a better sense of what needs to happen, a better control mechanism so that you can govern what's happening around you. But if your gut isn't healthy, if you're not feeding your gut the fuel that it needs, it's not going to be able to do this job as well as it should right? When we don't have a healthy microbiome, again, that's just the ecosystem of all of those bugs and things that live in our intestines. And if we don't have a healthy ecosystem, then we're not able to create healthy compounds that help us with that stress, that help us with that urgency, that help us with that daily grind and can ultimately protect us. So stress is known not just to make you feel like you're all over the place, Stress is also something that starts to break down the stomach lining. Oh, I'm sorry, the intestinal lining. We often think about tight junctions that are put into our gut. And what do they do? They keep the bad stuff out and they allow the good stuff in. Well, we want to make sure that we keep a very solid barrier within the intestines so that we can do just that, keep the bad stuff out and the good stuff in. But stress starts to wreak havoc on things. And we start to be able to get the wrong things through and absorbed into our bloodstream. This is where you may have a sensitivity to something around you and just may feel like, why am I so hypersensitive? Why does it seem to, it never triggered me before. I never felt that, you know, I was always able to eat like that before, but now it seems like just the smallest sip of coffee is irritating to my gut. Well, that's a sign that maybe the coffee that you're consuming, maybe foods that you are getting or you're not getting, or maybe the stress that is persistent, right? Maybe it's sub-threshold. Maybe you feel like you have a really good grasp on it, but it's constantly there. It's starting just to eat away and it's influencing the health of the gut. It's not just the barrier that's being influenced. It's in fact, the creation of neurotransmitters. The vagus nerve, if you did not know this, here's one of your hot tips or one of your uh, hot know-it-all um, facts is the vagus nerve creates a balance between all of this. It is the balancer for the rest and digest, right? And the fight and flight. That's the power of creating a healthy connection between the gut and the brain is signaling rest and digest or fight and flight as needed without influencing all of this. Now, it's not just the nerve itself that's responsible for this, right? This isn't just wiring in the body. Several compounds that are actually created in the gut are crucial to this communication, crucial to us tempering what we see around us and not feel um, a sense of stress or overburden or overwhelm as a result of that. In fact, when we think about creating health between the gut and the brain, we do wanna make sure that the nervous system is sound by getting a good night's sleep, by exercising, right? They're sending the right signals to the gut, but ultimately 
one of the biggest reasons why you're going to pay attention to the gut moving forward is that it is where serotonin is created. Yep. Serotonin is that neurotransmitter with metabolism on its mind. Did you know that serotonin plays a role in your desire for uh, food, food cravings, bored eating, sad eating, comfort eating? Did you know that healthy levels of metabolism can play a role, not just in healthy mood, but also in healthy appetite and weight and body composition support. Yeah, people don't know this. This is one of the reasons why sleep is so powerful for healthy weight. And while I've often said, if you don't sleep well, right, then we don't have the healthy body energy that we need the next day, whether that is to create healthy energy or it is to create and burn off energy. So serotonin, write this one down, is the hormone that has metabolism on its mind. It promotes a healthy mood. It promotes a healthy appetite without an over ambitious appetite. It even, ladies, supports healthy body temperature. Yeah, as we age and we start to go through different phases of our hormones, right, we start to sleep a little bit hotter as women. And as a result of that, we want to bring the temperature down. Well, your gut is a major way that you can do this. Not only will it play a role, ladies, in supporting that stress response, but also as we think about hormone fluctuations, I want you to think about the role of healthy sleep, the creation of serotonin, and the role that your gut plays in all of this. Because serotonin competes with your stress hormone. GABA, that's a big one, also created in the gut. This is an inhibitory neurotransmitter or brain chemical. This is the one that gives you calm, not just before the storm, throughout the storm. This is the one that helps with that racing quality in the brain, the one that helps you sleep. GABA is the one to balance your gut. Now, it could be a good day or a bad day, but the ability to create GABA settles it all down. That's the storm. Your gut health has a lot to say about whether or not you're going to manage some of those ups and downs well. Dopamine. Dopamine is created in the gut, supports the healthy mood, also creates healthy muscular fitness. Listen, dopamine got a pretty bad rap. Dopamine is one of the things that we link to not being able to stay focused or mental clarity, or we think about being overly distracted, right? Well, dopamine is also your, your ambition neurotransmitter. It's the get things done neurotransmitter. It's the one that actually gives you focus. But your gut needs to be in balance so that you're able to play serotonin, GABA, and dopamine together, right? In addition to that, dopamine is the one that gives you pleasure. It's also the one that can help us when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, balancing some of the endurance or energy that we're looking at throughout the day. So I've got a pop quiz for you. Now we already mentioned that these are all created in the gut, but which one of them is created because your gut bacteria are actually really good at fermentation from your diet? Do you think it's A, serotonin? Do you think it's B, GABA? Do you think it's C, dopamine? Which one of these is a direct descendant of how well your gut ferments fiber and ultimately creates these healthy brain chemicals? Is it all of the above? Yeah, it's all of the above. That's right. Some fibers, not all fibers, and that's the powerful lesson here. Some fibers, not all fibers, from, uh, they all ferment in the gut, but some of them actually create a very powerful compound in the gut called a short chain fatty acid. Short chain fatty acids are a great source of energy for the body. This energy created by short chain fatty acids is something that can help the body synthesize neurotransmitters, these brain chemicals for balance of the world around us. So whether you need serotonin, because it's the one that's got metabolism on its mind, whether you are thinking about GABA, because you're weathering a handful of storms, or you're thinking about dopamine, because you got to get stuff done, right? 
actually it's going to be a collection of all of these things. You want to make sure that your diet has a good source of short chain fatty acids. Not only do they create brain chemicals for balance, rest and digest, right? Mental clarity, fitness, all of it. They also create energy in the body. Now we should be very clear. I'm not talking about a shot of adrenaline, right? I'm not talking about a jump start to a battery. No, what I'm thinking about right now is not a stimulant. Short chain fatty acids create energy that the body needs to run efficiently to help the body use hormones like insulin and glucose to our advantage. It's the necessary energy required to charge that super highway so the brain and the liver are communicating and you're aging well so that our bodies can maintain healthy energy fluctuations and healthy energy metabolism. That ultimately translates to healthy body composition for us. As we age, it tends to get a little bit more expensive energy-wise to put on muscle or to burn fat, right? To keep energy up throughout the day, or as we like to say, gas in the tank. Well, short chain fatty acids can create that energy, whether you need it for brain focus, you need it for energy, for physical fitness, you want it to help with the heart and the endocrine system to help balance some of the hormones that can lead to extra weight around the middle or uh, concerns that we may have with lipids, uh, cholesterol that gets created in the body, whether that's from diet, whether that's from metabolism, or that's from genetics. Short chain fatty acids have your back. Listen, short chain fatty acids have been, it's exploding what we now know about short chain fatty acids. They've been beneficial to create, as I said, an environment where your body's actually more sensitive to insulin. <laughs> Why do you care? Why do you care if your body's more sensitive to insulin? If you have a healthy gut, it means that you're better balancing insulin and glucose because people that have a healthy response to insulin can build muscle even in later decades of life, and they can maintain muscle. If you're physically fit now, short chain fatty acids and their role with insulin can help you build muscle and recover from your stint at the gym, right? We know that muscles are not actually made in the gym. They're made once you leave the gym and growth factors are at play. Well, short chain fatty acids, because they can work with insulin, nutrient absorption or utilization, pulling glucose and amino acids into the muscle can actually help the body build muscle after the fact. You need to put sufficient stimulation against the muscle to make this work, right? You do still have to go to the gym. You have to put enough stimulation against the muscle so it's doing work. It spends a lot of time under tension. But once you're done, short chain fatty acids, because they help the body be more responsive, responsive to insulin, are actually going to help you build muscle. This can be a great uh, hand, uh, hand that you are, hand that you're dealt this, uh, you're going to play the right hand, right? Uh, because as an aging female and aging male, holding on to lean muscle mass is important as a young female, a young male, right? Uh, building that muscle mass is important. So we want to think about what do short chain fatty acids do for you? They balance the gut, right? So we're going to create uh, those three, uh, and there's more that we actually create, but in whole or uh, in part, the big players here are going to be those neurotransmitters of brain chemicals, serotonin, GABA, and dopamine. Short chain fatty acids help you do that. That's that rest and digest. It's the managing the storm or weathering the storm. It's that dealing with stress as splendid as it is, right? Now these short chain fatty acids help us with energy, not just with mood and brain function. Now they're gonna help us with energy. And that means whether you are an aging individual and you need a more efficient energy flow in the body to support bone mass, to support hormone uh, stabilization, to support healthy metabolism so that you are keeping your inches or centimeters exactly where you want them. That's the power 
of a short chain fatty acid and insulin sensitivity. If you are someone that is keen on building muscle, growing muscle, then insulin sensitivity is for you. And the answer is short chain fatty acids. I love that about short chain fatty acids because they can build muscle and they can help the body maintain muscle because muscle is very sensitive to insulin and short chain fatty acid help us with insulin sensitivity because they're energy producers. They also help you with the endurance needed to create energy for a physical exercise. Or if you're someone that doesn't have a lot of gas in the tank, short chain fatty acids, not after the first time you take a short chain fatty acid supplement, but when we think about short chain fatty acids over time, you're going to be able to actually use lipids during exercise or just during day-to-day -day metabolism more efficiently than you used to use them. <laughs> Talk about a fat burn, right? The fact that short chain fatty acids don't just make you more sensitive to insulin, they actually help you use lipids and triglycerides to your benefit by helping you burn them for energy. You guys have probably heard of a ketogenic diet. You've probably heard of intermittent fasting. You've heard of paleo and low glycemic impact eating. All of these are meant to create an environment where the body is in a fat burning zone. Well, short chain fatty acids create energy to put us in a situation where the body can preferentially use lipids for energy because short chain fatty acids are creating energy, right? In addition to that, short chain fatty acids help with nutrient uptake and that insulin sensitivity in the muscles that I talked about, but your fat is also insulin sensitive. And we want to make sure that it has healthy communication, including the way the body uses glucose and amino acids for both muscle growth and muscle repair, right? So when we think about muscle, the last thing I have to say is that because insulin is what's referred to as an anabolic hormone, a growth hormone, right? Then you're gonna think of what does short, what do short chain fatty acids do for me to help me create more muscle? And you're saying right now, I thought this was a talk on digestion. Yeah, healthy digestion, creation of short chain fatty acids from the right fiber sources or supplement sources are now going to sub support the brain in creation of neurotransmitters. That healthy gut, that hub of energy is actually going to help you with your fitness goals as well as some of your weight loss goals as well as brain health goals. Because insulin is an anabolic hormone, meaning a growth hormone, so it builds up, it doesn't break down. And that's a really important place to be when we think about supporting muscle, when we think about supporting longevity, when we think about supporting energy, right? Those energy pathways for protein synthesis and growth. It's not just growth factors in the muscle. It's also growth factors in a healthy brain, whether it's as we age or we just have a lot going on right now. Short chain fatty acids, in particular butyrate, are involved in regulating the integrity of the blood brain barrier. Are you kidding me? Right? So they just like they help prevent the wrong stuff getting in through the intestines, you're going to see this stop the wrong things from getting in through the brain because short chain fatty acids play a role in the integrity of the blood brain barrier as well, keeping those uh, substances that we want to keep out, out. Now, short chain fatty acids also produce, as I said, the production of growth factors in the body, specifically growth factors in the brain. We're looking to support healthy neurons as we age, right? Potentially playing a role, short chain fatty acids potentially play a role in your cognitive process, in your memory. Short chain fatty acids help you lose weight, right? Because they can support that energy expenditure, because they can support that burn, right? Short chain fatty acids, again, butyrate, have been associated with help, uh, a weight management benefits, helping you lose weight. Why? Because in the gut is where those hormones that stimulate appetite are coming from, right? 
um, but also hormones that dampen appetite take place in the gut. And short chain fatty acids create two big ones. You've heard of these, right? You've heard why exercise people say it's so interesting. After exercise, I don't feel as hungry as I thought that I might. It's because exercise creates a hormone in the gut that helps dampen that appetite. Um, exercise is, uh, in particular, uh, spinning is uh, one of the best ways you can create a peptide that's called PYY. And it is a dampen your appetite hormone. There's another one that you've heard a lot about, and it's one that helps us with insulin sensitivity. A lot of people right now are looking for ways to lose weight. They're looking for ways to support their insulin and glucose sensitivity for a healthy weight. They're even going to the doctor to see what they can take, right? Well, who knew that you didn't have to take it, that your body makes it, right? A hormone that helps dampen appetite and support insulin sensitivity such that you are able to lose weight. For those geeks that want to look it up, it's called GLP-1. Uh, this is a glucagon-like peptide, and it's what people are doing right now to lose weight, to decrease hunger, to have an, a sense of fullness. So like I said, who knew? You do not need to take the hormone. You can make the hormone. Now, on the flip side, if you don't have a healthy diet, you don't get a good night's sleep. You're not trying to do things to support the production of short chain fatty acids, right? You're not getting the right environment or creating the right environment for the gut. Then all of the things that short chain fatty acids do for you that are so incredibly beneficial, beneficial, you won't necessarily see those benefits in particular as you age. So what are some of the things that you do? What are going to be some of your takeaways here tonight? A diet that doesn't have the right source of good fiber is not going to create short chain fatty acids. It's not going to create the right environment for healthy weight, energy, cognitive function, right? All of the sexual function, all of it. So especially as we age, or if you are the type of person that burns the candle at both ends, you're always going, going, going. You've got your sh you you've got your shoulder right against the grindstone. You're just that uh, grind, 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 uh, hustle, hustle, hustle person. Then you're likely burning through energy faster than you're able to create it. You're sending some stress signals, whether unconsciously or otherwise, to the body, and you're going to start preserving that. You're going to start preserving some of these lipids. Um, so if you know that type or you are that type, that's just the never rest, never gives up, you, you really need to pay attention to your gut. So what needs to be on your menu? Well, you may be surprised. It's not just any old fiber. It's things like inulin, Jerusalem artichoke, chicory root. It's green bananas that do this. It's legumes, in particular lentils. They are really beneficial for creating short chain fatty acids. Now, there's some things that you can do that also create short chain fatty acids. Part of that whole inulin story or fiber story is also something called a fructo oligosaccharide. This is a very complex chain of resistant starches. And those exact same starches are found in the NutriClean fiber powder. So if you want to support your gut, if you want a low carb option, for supporting the production of short chain fatty acids. You may want to think about the NutriClean fiber powder because it has five grams of inulin specifically shown to create the short chain fatty acids, to create butyrate, to create some other uh, important gut bugs, in particular one called acromancia. If you haven't heard of that one, you want to be finding out what that does for you. Right. Well, inulin has been shown to do that even when we reduce calories in the diet and then resistant starches or oligosaccharides like those that are found in the NutriClean fiber powder can help you create good short chain fatty acids. Other things that create short chain fatty acids are what are referred to as beta glucans. Beta glucans are found in things like barley, 
but the amount of barley that you would have to consume is pretty fantastic. They're found in things like aloe plants. Um, and that's a wonderful way to get started with beta-glucans is to think about aloe juices and ways that you can get digestible food, uh, aloe in the body. Other rich sources of beta-glucans to create this kind of rest and digest, the balance between the gut and the brain is to look at things like mushrooms. Now, this is the one that I take, specifically MycoAdapt, because that's what it's gonna help me do, adapt to the stress around me, adapt to the world around me, right? There are three different mushrooms in MycoAdapt, turkey tail, lion's mane, cordyceps, and then there's a really powerful root of longevity in here called astragalus. Well. One of the other benefits that you didn't know about MycoAdapt is that beta-glucans help us create healthy short-chain fatty acids. When we don't eat a healthy diet or we're not getting these things in our diet, right? Or we're not supplementing with some of these things. Maybe we're consuming too much saturated fat. Maybe we're storing too much glucose as a result of that or storing lipids as a result of some of our diet. And what I mean by that is the way the body produces energy. If you are choosing low fiber diets for a high saturated fat diet, you might start to, if you're not choosing your fats well, you might start to notice what's called a gut biotic shift. You might start to shift to the right or shift to the left where you don't have a balance or a large diversity of gut bugs. Well, here's a quick fix. <laughs> probiotics, and omega-3 fatty acids, you can actually bring um, a high saturated fat diet back into balance with things like omega-3 fatty acids. That definitely has gotten a bad rap when it comes to heart disease. But what we know today is it has a lot to do with the fact that low fiber diets don't create butyrate. High fat diets of particular fats, not omega-3 fats, don't create a lot of Butyrate. They create other fatty acids that actually tell the body to store glucose and to store lipids. So consider more fish in your diet and definitely think about getting an omega-3 fatty acid supplement. Those are two great ways to shift the bacteria back to balance. Then there's going to what I like to say, the direct source. You want to go direct to the source and get short chain fatty acids. This is an incredibly innovative product called Advanced Digestive Support. It specifically has an ingredient in it called Core Biome. It is a tributyrin butyrate short chain fatty acids. And it is in fact the butyrate that plays that role in that healthy vagal nerve tone, that gut brain axis. Butyrate is known to be the predominant short chain fatty acid to help you create neurotransmitters. It also happens to be the body's preferred fatty acid energy source. So when we think about short chain fatty acids, butyrate is doing the heavy lifting, making sure that your liver has the energy that it needs, that your heart has the energy that it needs, that your brain has the energy that it needs, and that you're able to create that energy balance so that your body can serve to use things like lipids and glucose for fuel. Butyrate is also known to be one of the major players in creating those healthy appetite hormones. So if you need to focus on the metabolism neurotransmitter like serotonin, and you want to focus on that appetite benefit, right? Maybe sugar cravings or comfort food eating is something that you do. Well, up, up, upping your butyrate is one of the ways that you can support not just that healthy gut barrier, not just that healthy blood brain barrier, but also creating the barrier between overeating, problematic eating, lack of hormone control or balance. There are so many different things that a healthy diet, a healthy exercise routine, and a healthy sleep routine can do for you. For everything else, I want you to think about supplements that can help you reach your goals faster. Everybody needs a multivitamin. Everybody needs an omega-3 fatty acid. Tonight, I hope I've shared with you some information that help you understand why you would benefit from short-chain fatty acid supplementation. Until I get to see you next time, 
Go be healthy. Go be brilliant.